Hi, and good afternoon or morning, wherever you may be calling in from. This is Jeff Henderson. I'm president of the Aluminum Extruders Council. Uh, thank you for taking time out of your schedule to attend this uh, important webinar today. Please be aware that the webinar will be recorded and uploaded to our website, um, which you can then send as a link out to folks that you want to share it with. Um, during the presentation today, we've muted all of the callers. However, you can uh, provide us with a question. And if you can look at the menu that comes up um, here and see where it says questions. And you can go ahead and type one to me. At the end of our presentation, we'll address those questions uh, as they come forward. I want to let folks know just off the top here that we've been spending a lot of time on the 232 investigation, especially during the last two to four weeks. As you might recall, this investigation was uh, initiated earlier this year by the president, and we were quite active at that time, including uh, making uh, a public uh, testimony at the hearing in June. Um, not long after that hearing, the administration announced that it was going to shelved the 232 for a bit and start working on tax reform. So it was about three weeks ago or so at this point where that began to happen. And I began to get uh, emails and phone calls from members and even some of your customers concerned about the 232. And we hightailed it to uh, DC and spent a lot of time there. Uh, so today, what we want to do is to give you all an update on what's going on and what you can do to help affect the outcome of this. Um, we have uh, hired a law firm of Mayor Brown to help us in this, uh, in this matter. And one of their partners, uh, Matthew McConkey, will be the presenter today. Um, not only is Matthew a partner at uh, Mayor Brown, but he advises clients on a wide range of international trade matters with particular emphasis on anti-dumping, anti-subsidy, and general international trade and import issues. In anti-dumping and CVD matters, he defends producers and importers against the US, EU, Chinese, and Vietnamese unfair trade allegations. Matthew has extensive experience in assisting companies that export from non-market economy countries with respect to the selection of surrogate values and maximizing the impact of various distribution systems on dumping findings. Uh, Matthew is a frequent speaker in seminars and conferences, as well as having published many articles. He is a member of Law 360's International Trade Editorial Advisory Board. And on a personal level, I can tell you it's been uh, quite a pleasure to work with Mayor Brown and Matthew, and I can tell you they're doing a really good job for us. So with that, uh, Matthew, I will turn it over to you. Well, thanks, Jeff. I'll take an introduction like that any day. So, uh, as Jeff mentioned, so so the AC uh, hired us uh, very quickly after the president announced he was going to do the 232 um, on aluminum. As you also know, he uh, is also doing one on steel. Um, the, the team we pulled together. I've been helping Jeff more on the substantive sides of things and the, the legal aspects of the 232 investigation. Um, and fitting into that rubric. Uh, two of my colleagues who are not on the call today have also, though, been extremely instrumental. We have Warren Payne, uh, who used to be uh, on the staff of the House Ways and Means Committee with uh, Kevin Brady. He has uh, been working with Jeff extensively up on the Hill, um, uh, meeting with members of Congress and the Senate, and trying to get a letter out uh, from these guys to go to uh, Secretary Ross of the Department of Commerce, um, and that's about to happen. And then we've also been working with uh, Tim Keeler of my office. Tim is a lawyer here at Mayor Brown. Uh, Tim used to be at the Department of Treasury, and then he was also for a while the uh, Chief of Staff over at the USTR. So Tim's been helping us all out on uh, interaction with the administration, meeting with the NS NSC, uh, with the USTR. We've met with the Department of Commerce twice, so Tim's helping us lead that. So as, as Jeff mentioned, so this started back, and as you all know, uh, back in, in, in late April, uh, both the aluminum and the steel cases. And as you recall, when this was first announced um, by the President and by the Secretary of Commerce, this was all going to happen lickety split, right? They were going to initiate these and they were literally expecting to have recommendations to the President, I think something like within 30 days, um, and we're hoping that the President would then sign off very quickly. 
the fact of the matter is they quickly realized they'd bitten off a little bit more than they could chew in, in that time frame. Um, having said that, so when they first initiated, though, they gave us all time to submit written comments, which we did. We uh, submitted extensive comments to the Department of Commerce. Uh, thereafter, in, in late June, Jeff came um, to D.C. and presented testimony in front of the Department of Commerce. And then all this happened very quickly, and then all of a sudden they said, listen, well, wait a minute, we're going to need more time. Um, a big chunk of that happened when, uh, because other agencies, while the decision and the recommendation, uh, well, the decisions of presidents, the recommendation uh, goes from the Secretary of Commerce to the President. Uh, he is directed to seek the input of other agencies of the United States, and there's been a lot of pushback um, from various proposals, especially in steel, um, but in aluminum as well. So we're now more on a on a more uh, uh, normal trajectory. So uh, we're now expecting the 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 the, the, the two thirty two law tells the president that he has 270 days to make a decision um, once once the uh, investigations are initiated. So that puts it on or about January 22nd of next year. Um, and by all accounts, they want to meet that deadline. Um, the president's looking, you know, looks like they're going to, the, the, the tax bills going to the president, they're saying by tomorrow, it's going to be on his desk. Um, so they're going to want this as well in January. The next slide I just put up are the, the criteria to be addressed. Um, this is just coming from the statute, the, the 232 statute. I think a lot of you know this is not a statute that's been used very often. Um, uh, this came a little bit out of the blue when they when they announced this. It's been years since the decade since they've used this uh, in the past. The basic gist of it is they look to determine whether or not they should take action against imports if the product that's being imported has national security or critical infrastructure impacts. Um, so, so for example, in the, in the aluminum, in this aluminum case, you know, our submission was talking about, yes, aluminum is, you know, uh, probably a little bit less so with national security, but with, uh, with respect to uh, critical infrastructure, aluminum is important. And then it goes through these various, uh, uh, criteria that the president and the Department of Commerce are supposed to look at. So oftentimes they talk about national security, but just understand that it has a little bit broader of an interpretation when it, they talk about critical infrastructure. Um, just by way of background, this next slide that we just put up is there was a 30, 332 investigation um, that started, I believe it started in late 2016, ended in June 2017. The U.S. International, it's, it's, it's not necessarily related to the 232, even though the numbers are, are, are somewhat similar, and also covered aluminum. But what this was, was Congress had asked the International Trade Commission, an, in, an independent agency here in, in D.C., simply to investigate the impact that uh, uh, imports of aluminum are having on the domestic aluminum market. Um, and the ITC issued a report. They did an extensive fact-finding. They did do hearings. The ITC doesn't take action. These 332 uh, re uh, actions, there is no to-do list a afterwards. There is no, um, again, action that's is really taken, but um, it, it, it's used. Uh, to sort of inform policymakers in, in Washington um, about certain steps. And so I know that, you know, the Department of Commerce is looking at the 332 um, a report that the International Trade Commission issued. And, you know, what that report, if you it's, it's, it's extensively, it's very extensive, it's very long. Um, but the ITC report, the upshot of that ITC report basically says China is our problem, right? China is our big problem. They're over capacity. And also highlights the fact that China does not export primary aluminum, um, which has been a, a big issue with us uh, and the extruders uh, uh, issues with the 332. So, so here we are right now. So, you know, the, they had the hearings, written reports have been in. You know, the Department of Commerce is, you know, still looking at, they're still working on the report that will go. So it's the Bureau of uh, BIS. At the Department of Commerce is actually handling the issue. They will do a report that will go to Secretary Ross. If he signs off on it, then that's the report that goes to the president. Um, 
so there's a little bit of tea, tea or tea leaf reading here, um, but it's pretty consistent what we're hearing. And what we're hearing is that the administration is seriously considering imposing tariffs or quotas uh, on imports of primary aluminum. Um, in the meetings we've had, and we just, I think it was last week we had another one with the Department of Commerce, BIS Matt Borman, who's leading the, um, Assistant Secretary who's leading uh, the drafting of the report. They're looking at doing something on primary aluminum. Um, they believe that, it seems to be that they believe that uh, the U.S. needs a primary aluminum industry, uh, manufacturing industry, and they need to do something about it. Uh, we also took from that, they also mentioned quotas a couple of times in that meeting, which gave us a little bit of pause, um, but clearly quotas and or tariffs are on the table. And it does sound like they're seriously considering exempting imports from Canada. Um, so listen, we've been running again. We've been up on the hill. Jeff was just here last week, been here several times in the last couple of months, meeting with both members up on the hill. Uh, members and, and senators, and again, meeting with uh, people at the administration, the USTR, Department of Commerce, the NEC, and whatever. Um, and we've had some various themes, okay? One is really hammering home to these guys that when they're looking at trade measures, and especially if they're looking at trade measures on primary aluminum, they have to remain cognizant and sensitive to the impact that that can have on extruders and other downstream sectors in the aluminum sector. Um, that they can't just focus on primary. If they have blinders on and they just focus on primary, they very well will inflict more harm than good here. Um, and we've hit it, you know, when pounding the table and, you know, the, the, the uh, again, the 332 report's been helpful in that regard and saying, listen, the problem we've got here is China and their overcapacity in aluminum. And remember, China doesn't export primary aluminum. So there's no Chinese primary coming to the United States. So be careful what you're doing here. And then we also have offered, what we've done is offered some alternatives um, to the administration to say, listen, um, here are some, some, some things you could do uh, to address the actual problem we have, which is China's overcapacity uh, that is focused, um, addresses the problem and doesn't uh, carry the uh, risks to extruders and other downstream sectors of the market. Uh, so there, there are proposals basically. The first proposal is, is and we, we've, we've um, relied heavily on sort of the uh, history we have, you all have from the anti-dumping countervailing duty case. And we've proposed to them and say, listen, your problem you've got is China. China doesn't export primary, so what you ought to do is impose tariffs on the aluminum content of any product coming in from China, whether it's 100% aluminum product or it's just got some aluminum in there, tariff it, okay, at excessively high tariffs, and I think we've suggested 100%. Um, they've done this in the past uh, in, in, in the anti-dumping countervailing duty cases, where they will they'll countervail an anti-dump, uh, the, the portion of a product coming in, such as a curtain wall, they will assess duties on the aluminum content. Uh, we've suggested that um, as our, our primary uh, way for them to solve the problem. Uh, the reaction to the proposal has been decent um, from on the Hill, uh, and we also have on it from a, a bipartisan basis, people get it. Um, they like the way that it attacks um, the problem, the root cause of the problem, which is China, um, and also recognizes the fact that China doesn't uh, 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 export primary. There's, you know, the reaction from the administration has been a little bit more mixed. Um, clearly, the focus of many in the administration, and it would appear at this point uh, at the Department of Commerce, that they really want to get U.S. smelters up and running at capacity. They want to get, you know, the primary industry, the primary aluminum industry on a solid footing. Um, and, and for whatever reason, they think, it appears to, believe, appears to be that they believe that tariffs and quotas against primary being imported in the United States is the way to go. They get the fact that they shouldn't be hurting extruders and downstream industry, but their real focus right now seems to be on 
the uh, uh, on, on the smelters and and trying to do something for primary aluminum. Uh, so in, we've also, uh, you know, understanding that, you know, the administration and people looking at this issue are looking for other alternatives. So we have a plan B um, in the letter that we've been circulating up on the Hill and that we've presented to people in the administration. And basically that is saying, listen, okay, if you do tariff uh, primary aluminum, you put import duties on primary aluminum coming into the United States, you need one, exclude Canada, but two, and this is the most important part, is proportional remedies need to be applied on all downstream products. So basically saying you can't tariff primary aluminum, uh, but let extrusions come in duty free. Because um, simply you'll start to see just a flood of uh, extrusion products coming in. So you have to do something proportional to make sure that you don't kill the, uh, or at least severely hurt the uh, extruders industry. Um, again, we've drafted a letter uh, in support of this, the, for the first proposal we call Proposal A, which is the value content proposal of, of uh, imposing tariffs on the, the, the aluminum content in the items. Um, that's been circulating on the Hill. Uh, we heard today that the House Ways and Means uh, Committee is ready to sign off on it. They actually gave us some line, some line edits on it that we're looking at right now. Um, once we can finalize that, we can start to get that circulated and start to get signatures on it, and that letter will be sent to uh, Commerce Secretary Law, Roth. Um, again, what, we're, what we say in there is please, you know, uh, adopt this value, could do, don't, don't do more harm uh, than good, um, adopt the value content proposal, and don't impose restrictions on imports of primary. Um, but if you decide to do primary, uh, go with Plan B, which is you've got to do something uh, similar to extrusions uh, being imported to the United States so you don't create some type of a, a, a miscurrent there. So now I'm going to turn it over to Jeff really quickly about uh, what can be done going forward. All right. Thank you, Matthew. Um, uh, very much appreciate that. Um, again, a reminder to those on the call. Um, if you have questions, feel free to uh, pose those questions to me and we'll come to them. So we want to talk a little bit about uh, the next steps that we have. Uh, this train is moving very quickly, so we must do the same. Um, as Matthew indicated, uh, we do have edits back from the House Ways and Means Committee. This is a big step forward for us. Uh, first glance, they look good. They actually look like improvements to our letter. And uh, once we get that uh, kind of confirmed and finalized, I will recirculate that out to our membership in the form of another trade alert which uh, ideally we could get out later today, maybe tomorrow morning, but we'll get it out. And we will be asking you to contact your congressmen and women with this letter and let them know at that point that the letter is in circulation, let them know your concerns and pitch them on signing off on the letter. Um, we focused a little bit more on this action on the House side. Um, we have taken the letter the original draft letter over to the Senate side. We have not gotten the traction there, but we've had less of a runway to get in a position to do that. But once this letter is finalized, we, I will be going back to those senators and I will be asking you to go to your senators as well, asking them to sign on it. But we will be looking for uh, co-leads, especially on the Republican side. With these letters, you'd like to have somebody leading it on the Republican side of the aisle and somebody leading it on the Democratic side of the aisle, and then they take the task of going around and passing the letter off. But I can tell you, regardless of whether or not the senators that we've talked to um, will sign a letter or not, they certainly know what our position is. Many of those senators we've been working with, with year, for years with our, uh, our uh, trade orders, and they are extremely sympathetic and understand our position and concerned that all of the hard fought gains that we've attained uh, could be put in jeopardy. So uh, that's where we are. On other elements of, our, our, of what we're trying to do, uh, we wanna get the word out. So we have some media outlets we've, uh, we've reached out to to get our voice heard that way. And we think that'll help. Um, I encourage all of you to get this to your customers. Because at the end of the day, as you know, coming from the industry, 
know, we uh, see uh, any impact to our price as a result of the administration's actions, we're going to be passing that along. My guess is that that would come in the form of the Midwest premium, which would be inclusive then of any tariffs or any other delivery issues and speculation, quite frankly, and unfortunately, that might come as a result of this. And uh, it'll be our customers that bear the brunt of it. And to me, in talking with members of Congress and with many of you uh, on, uh, offline, um, that's what I'm worried about, is that the customers we provide that are currently active in global competition uh, will be further impaired in their ability to compete, even right here at home. I think about the curtain wall and how they compete against uh, curtain wall fabricators and installers from all over the world and one more bogey on their back. I worry about aluminum intensive applications like trailers. I worry about the heavy investment we've made in automotive and what could happen to the piece prices and so on. So I think it's important that we let them know what's coming because what I've found is many of them are unaware. And this is, there is still time for them to add to the, the noise and to call their congressmen and senators and let them know what we're doing and take a look at our letter, which we believe with the aluminum value, uh, aluminum value content tariff coming out of China is one of the best ways for them to insulate themselves from what China's doing and working downstream in the market even today. And I think that's a, a real opportunity for them. So the timeline is tight. I know with the holidays coming, um, this is the kind of thing, if you're gonna be involved in, you need to impact it quickly or we're gonna miss the moment. So we're moving fast here at HQ to get you what you need. In addition to that, um, we, we continue to raise donations for the 232 uh, legal defense on this. Um, the 232, is, it was an a unscheduled budget item that has been quite expensive for us. Uh, we've had a lot of folks come forward. Uh, we've recommended a contribution of $3,500, um, and, and we've seen a, a good pool on that. But if you haven't done that yet, or if you know of a colleague who may not have done that, please ask them to do so. We can con we continue to help uh, offset these uh, unscheduled un uh, costs. I can't underscore this enough. I, I'm always afraid that the folks that I represent, the extruders, you folks, that this becomes a Jeff Henderson task, and Jeff's going to go in there and fight it. But let me tell you, when I walk in there, I'm a trade association guy. Um, you know, I could speak for the industry. On a good day, I might even speak persuasively. But I'm not the guy out there hiring the people. I'm not the guy out there writing the checks for the millions of dollars in investments. That's coming from you all. And that's really what matters here. So your efforts to, to come in behind the, the, the path that we've laid and to, to get this in the ears of your elected officials is key to them understanding. And I absolutely believe that if we can get our customers to do it, that the, the, that the noise will even be broader and much louder and even more effectively. Nobody really knows what's going to come in, 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 in the days. I, it, it, it's hard to say. I, I, I would tell you from my experience that they are absolutely committed to do something on primary. They see it as a national security issue. We've talked about other alternatives besides just putting a tariff on the entire industry. We've talked about our concerns about what would have to happen and cascade down with, with a tariff that we would hate to see but would have to have to protect ourselves from every country that's got an extrusion press to come in and be able to undercut us by whatever that delta in our pricing is impacted from the tariff. It, it, it's just too important. But I think more than anything, given our experience, we've become a bit of the poster child for the industry about this threat that we face from China to our entire aluminum industry. And if if, if somebody believes that an aluminum industry, a vital one, is, is important to our national security, and they say, yes, they believe that, and if they understand that the biggest threat to our industry is the overcapacity build and overproduction of downstream aluminum products that are pouring into this country from China, and they agree that's, that is the key issue, then we need to find a way to take them on. And we see this as a moment in time with a president whose rhetoric certainly fit the mold to stand up to China and say once and for all 
If you don't bring in your corrupt aluminum industry, you're not going to have unimpaired access to our markets. Furthermore, I believe we could get other countries to sign on and to stand up to them because they're facing the same threat and we could take a leadership position in the world on this issue and finally, perhaps, collectively get a stick big enough to go up against China and force them to the negotiations to rid the, the, the globe of this overbuild and the overproduction of aluminum. And that's really where we want to keep bringing the discussion back to is don't miss the moment to take on China. This is our moment. And that's basically what we like to talk about. So um, you see on your screen there the donation form where it's located, aecfairtrade.org. Uh, at aec.org, fair trade, you'll find other supporting documents. We will upload and send out the, the revised letter, like I mentioned earlier. You'll see that in a trade alert, and it'll give you a link to go get that done. And that letter you can send out to your customers with any other information you need. If there's anything I can do, a phone call, an email, anything you think would help, please don't hesitate to reach out to me directly. This is uh, too big of an issue not to take advantage of every opportunity we have to make our case known. Um, with that, um, I believe we're done, Matthew. I don't have any more uh, comments, but I do have a, um, a couple of questions here. Let me see if I can figure out how to make the screen work for me. How can I see that? Where's that? All right, um, I had a question about the Aluminum Association's position. We worked together with the Aluminum Association on this matter, on again, off again, through the process. We, we weren't in the last run that we just had, uh, not for any other reason than probably just coordination. But the Aluminum Association, uh, you know, agrees with us that tariffs on primary aluminum are exactly the wrong approach. It's not solving the problem that the world is facing in aluminum right now. Um, but the Aluminum Association, recognizing that it's a China issue, they have proposed that there be tariffs placed on all what's considered Chapter 76 of the HTS Code. What that means is essentially all semi-fabricated forms of aluminum should be protected from China with a tariff. I don't know if they've actually uh, suggested a tariff. But in earlier discussions this year, they were talking in the 20 to 30 percent range. Frankly, that's, that's a proposal that wouldn't have any effect on us. Uh, we don't have an extrusion problem based on our orders, and our scope goes much deeper than that. But, but that has been their position. Uh, I had a question here. If we've got a pitch sheet, pitch sheet of talking points, we will get those to you. They are a part of what we've been sending out. But for the most part, I would suggest you stay very close to the content of the letter. Uh, you can see for yourself what those talking points are, but we do have versions of that that we've sent out. Frankly, we've been sending things out with um, uh, the attorneys reviewing it for us to be sure that we're in sync with what we're saying, whether we're in a lobby call or we're in front of an agency or we're communicating through some kind of written form. Um, I had another question about the dynamics of North Korea, China. Is it realistic to assume and so on and so forth? And, and I guess, you know, that's really anybody's guess. Um, it, it really just comes down to whether or not uh, the president is going to perceive that China is the issue and whether he'll take a stance on that. Um, there is the, the likelihood that he won't, um, and he'll be focusing on primary, which would involve other countries, because China doesn't export primary products. Um, whether or not he does that because of North Korea or some other uh, political reason, it would be anybody's guess. But I, I never heard anybody say anywhere in, in, my, in our work that we've done this year on this in D.C. to suggest that there's any linkage between what he's going to do or not do on China and what's going on with North Korea. I mean, remember, just last month, they self-initiated a trade case against China on uh, sheet products, and, and I think that was, you know, and they, and they accepted and they moved forward with the aluminum foil case, and they've been very good to us in our case. So I think you know, from their perspective, the evidence is that they are willing to take on China. Yeah, I don't think, I don't, just to join in there, I don't believe that this 232 is going to be used as any type of bargaining chip with China. Um, I think the, the, the goal, we've, part of the goal we've had is just to keep the focus on China, saying this is a China problem, and therefore your remedy must address that, right? Must address China, 
And since China doesn't address primary, then you got to be a little bit more creative. So that's good. Here's a question, uh, Matthew, that I've I've had a couple times. When the president comes out, whenever after the the deadline for commerce to submit the recommendations, the president has you tell us about how the president works, and then when the president makes his decision, what would the effective date be? You know, there, it's, the, the president's supposed to make his decision there by the middle of January. That's 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 not just a report. That's supposed to be when the president, when people are expecting the president to make his decision. Um, you know, it, it, it depends. If there's, you know, there, there is no, there's nothing in the statute. I don't believe there's, there's anything in the statute that says the effective date. My understanding or my belief is that they will want to make it as uh, 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 effective as soon as humanly possible. Um, right? There's, just, there's no reason to let it. Uh, let it lay out there. Now, were they to do go with our proposal um, on attacking the aluminum content, that would probably take um, a few weeks to, to get that up and running because it would take a, a lot of liaison with uh, U.S. Customs uh, to come up with forms to, to reveal the report, the aluminum content, so there would be some structure. If it's just, if they, go, if they just go with tariffs, something that that's it's relatively simple to do. I think that would be effective uh, within a matter of days. Um, so it depends on it depends really on what the resolution uh, is, what the proposal is that they end up proposing. So, um, but I don't think you know, they're going to want to do it and they're going to want to have it effective as, as quickly as possible. I'm sure. Uh, if they pass along a tariff, would it be retroactive? Is there any chance of that? Uh, the the law does not uh, like retroactivity in these cases. It's very difficult to do. Um, so I would, my guess is no. Uh, and plus, you know, they they can do it sometimes in the anti-dumping countervailing duty cases and original investigations where you can have retroactive retroactivity in critical circumstances situations. But in those situations, you've also got suspended liquidations. And in this situation, since you don't, the entry, you know, shipments have already come in and the entries won't have been suspended, I don't think they'll be looking at retroactivity. So, okay. And that was, subjected, that was subjected to a significant legal challenge. Um, and I don't think they're going to be looking for that, right? So I'm sure their lawyers are going to be saying, let's, let's just make it pro or, you know. Right. Okay. Effective. Um, another question. Um, a lot of folks, because the steel 232 was issued a week or two before the aluminum 232, a lot of folks have been kind of watching what happens with the steel 32, 232 to see if there are any tea leaves there, or indicators. Is there anything that that uh, we can glean from what's going on on that side? You know, I don't. I actually don't think so. And you know, you know, you probably get you know four trade lawyers in a room and get six different answers uh, to this one. I actually don't think so. There, you know, they're different industries and they're they're very different dynamics going on. You know, with the, what's what really delayed the steel, the steel case uh, 232 was. I mean, the department. You know, that the commerce was ready to move, and the Department of Defense. Um, and the State Department's came out, and more of the Department of Defense gets heard more at the White House, um, came out strongly uh, in opposition uh, to various parts of the, the 232 on steel. So, uh, no, I don't really think so. Be, you know, again, there's just different dynamics, um, and you have different constituencies. Um, you know, I, I, the 232, I think, uh, uh, has been just delayed because of the, the tax reform going on. But if, now that that's about to clear out, um, 232 is going to move forward on its own. So, yeah. Yeah, okay. Um, the last question I have, and we've got a moment. If you've got a question, go ahead and get it in now. But uh, the last one is, in the event that the president makes a decision that we just find unbearable as an industry, is there any way to appeal or to, or to challenge it in any way, or is it is it game over? It's not necessarily game over. It's, it's, it's a Difficult, you know, chances are it's a very difficult and expensive litigation. Um, the, the president has, a, you know, we can imagine um, a lot of discretion in this area to determine what, it, and the law allows him to impose restrictions, uh, fairly broad restrictions, uh, when he finds that it's necessary for national security and for critical in infrastructure. Um, so, you know, to have a court come in and say, you know, the president's exceeded his 
statutory authority, you'd have to get a court to say, well, you know, to overturn the president's decision as the, that, that uh, for example, that aluminum is critical to, to national security um, and critical infrastructure. Is it possible? Yeah, right? I mean, sort of like with a travel ban, you look at it. I mean, the president has lots of authority there and lots of discretion, and you're able to get some, some courts to come in and, and, and put a hold on it. Um, partly because of, of the, the comments the president had made um, in public and tweeting that suggested, you know, the import ban really wasn't focused on what he was saying it was. You haven't really seen that with aluminum. You've seen a little bit with steel. Um, you really haven't seen those types of statements about aluminum. Um, but having said that, if they did try, you know, for example, if they tried to go retroactive, well, you know, the, the, uh, there's, there's a claim that the 232 statute doesn't allow retroactivity. If they wanted retroactivity, they could have said it. Um, so, that, you know, it's, it's possible that the act, that there, there could be a, a, some type of legal flaw. The president has to abide by U.S. law, 232 U.S. law, but there's, there's possibility that he could impose something that would have some component of it would be uh, contrary to U.S. law. Um, but it would, so, so anyways, the answer is, is it possible? Yeah. Um, not necessarily terribly likely, and it would be a difficult role to take. And expensive. Yeah. So. Very well. All right. Well, listen, I want to thank everybody for your attendance today. Uh, oh, we have one more question. Has there been any discussions of power subsidies for the U.S. primary producers? Well, uh, I, I, I would jump in on this one uh, first, and 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 be very clear that in our discussions with everybody we've talked to that's in the loop, all the agencies, we, we, we've had our discussion about our content tariff, uh, China is an issue, et cetera, et cetera. And then they say, yeah, but what about the primary? And our view here has been uh, very clear, which is you've got to understand what problem we're really trying to solve. And, and the key issue involving uh, the production of primary aluminum has to do with energy costs. Everybody knows it. And when you're shopping for cheap energy around the world, the United States is not on the short list. And that's why the smelters have developed where they have around the world, because they have access to cheap energy, whether it's uh, because they're long on it or they've subsidized it. And we have suggested to them that under the guise of, of, uh, of national security, if the administration wants X number of smelters running, that they should underwrite the cost like other countries have, and let's fight fire with fire. But let's not risk or endanger the entire industry by putting an unnecessary tariff on primary aluminum imports. Um, it's, I've not had any kind of reaction to those comments that make me suggest that's even close to the direction they're going in. But we have yeah. had those conversations quite openly. Yeah, I mean, I've been in those, you know, several of those meetings where we've talked about it. And, I, and, I, and in all honesty, you know, I think that the individuals we've spoken to get it, um, and there's a logic to them. You've also got a president who, you know, what was it, four, six weeks ago or so, you know, in a meeting said, bring me tariffs. Somebody bring me tariffs. So um, I think it's just a little bit too nuanced for this administration. Yeah. All right, well, again, um, um, all right, so that'll be it. Um, we will have this recorded. We'll get a trade alert out. It'll have an updated letter on it. I'll have a link to this recording that you can share. Uh, but get the news out as quickly as you can. Let your customers know. Ask them to react to it. Uh, we've got a few business days left this year, uh, maybe a couple of days in January, and after that, the die will have pretty much been cast in my view. So let's see what we can make happen. All right, all. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Thank you, Matthew. Thank you.